Tonight we're going to be camping in my 2023 Subaru Crosstrek. I'll show you what we're using and how we're going to do it. You've probably heard of the Luna Life Air mattresses and we wanted one of those, but we wanted to explore a more budget friendly option first. So we got a SUV air mattress that is kind of generic off of Amazon. As you can see, it fits in my car pretty well and we have to move the front seats forward and lean them forward for it to fit completely. There are four sections you can put air into, so you can inflate just one half of the air mattress at a time, which I like for if you wanted to go camping by yourself. So each side has two spots you put air into, the mattress part for that side and the pillow part for that side. If I didn't wanna put my seat all the way up, I could just not inflate this pillow portion. Even though it is a universal fit, it still fits in here pretty well, but it's not perfect. But on the sides back here, they kind of make it so it can flip up just in case your car is a little wider. This can go down or this can be up like this. It came with this air pump and it inflates the air mattress pretty quickly. You plug in the first black portion and take the clear portion up and then start blowing it up. It's important to have your bags in the footwells of the passenger seats. That way the head portion has some more support. Now we'll inflate the pillow portion. The right side of the mattress is a little bit bigger because the right back seat is a double and the left side is a single. So you could still actually put up the single back seat or the double back seat, depending on which side you wanna have inflated. This is what it looks like set up and it feels pretty comfortable. We're really excited to sleep here tonight. It feels like we'll have plenty of space. It's kind of cold outside, so we are gonna use the diesel heater. So I hope that works well. We're currently at the Taconic Hereford multiple use area and there are a handful of designated camping sites here, and it is also a popular area for mountain biking and hiking. Tonight for dinner, we're making chicken tikka masala. We have all of our ingredients laid out. We have chicken, onions, chicken broth, tomato sauce, heavy cream, a spice mix that I pre-mixed, and rice. We're starting with adding the chicken and then we are going to be adding the onion next. While Kate is cooking, Elizabeth and I are going up here to start the fire. Later tonight after dinner, we're gonna be making a like cast iron skillet dessert. It's starting. We actually stayed at the same camp spot last night as well. Last night we went out to a local sushi place before coming here and got to the site kind of late. It's Friday night and we just drove into our camp spot and I'm actually gonna be staying in the car tonight. And hey everyone, <laughs> I'm here too. I'm gonna add all of our spices in now. Let's do another check on the chicken. It's looking really good. Now we're adding in the tomato sauce and we're adding in this whole can. Then I'm gonna add in about a cup of chicken broth. The last thing that we're adding is the heavy cream. Just checked on the fire one more time and it's doing pretty well. We're still waiting for dinner to finish up, finish cooking. And earlier today, we went and stopped at a farmer's market in the town of Cold Spring. And we went on a hike in Harriman State Park. And here's some video from that. We're currently doing a hike called Big Hill and Jackie Jones Mountain Loop. The trail started off on like an old paved road and now we've turned off of that and now we're following yellow markers on a more narrow trail. Soon after we left the paved road and went up the little smaller trail, we ran into all these older stone remnants of buildings. It shouldn't be that hard of a hike. We're assuming it's gonna take us around two hours. There should be an old fire tower up there and we'll check in at the top. <laughs> <laughs> If you're wondering who this is, it's my little sister, Elizabeth. Hi, this is my first time camping, so I'm very excited. This is a loop hike, not an in and out. So this is the junction and we're going to the right. I'll include a little trail map so you can see what I'm talking about.
if we kept walking up that service road, we would have ended up at this cell tower thing over here. I don't know if you can see it. We just got to the top of the mountain. The hike was so fun. It was very windy, but as you can see, the fire tower is right behind us. Right, you can see that cell tower, tower we passed, and that's the Hudson River. I think there's some little reservoir right behind us. How did you think the hike up was, Kate? Well, it was pretty good. It was easier than I was expecting. Yeah, it definitely was. We're heading down the mountain now. We have about two miles left, and we'll check in with you at the campsite. <laughs> As you can see, we had a great hike and dinner is ready. So we're gonna be trying that in a second. It looks really good. This is the chicken and rice and all the seasonings in there. How do you think it is? You've already tried it. I think it came out really good. I like how much sauce there is on the chicken and I feel like the flavor is really good. It's not spicy or anything. It came out good. Okay, it sounds like I'll like it. Yeah. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. I honestly thought the sauce, okay, there was too much sauce at first, but it's actually a perfect amount. I think it was going to be spicier, but I like it. Yeah, it's not it very spicy. Now that we're done cleaning up from dinner, we're going to be making a dessert over the fire. The dessert is a snickerdoodle cake, and we're going to be making it in our cast iron pan. Since we don't have a big enough mixing bowl, we're mixing it all in the bag. So far, we've added one egg. Here comes the second one. It's really hard to get out. Wow. So we just got it on. We're spreading it out now. It's looking pretty good. It does look good. I think that this is going to bake nicely. There's a big bonfire going on down the road and people keep driving by. This is probably like the sixth or seventh time people have driven by. Mm. That sounds better. Okay, here we go. This is where it's going to be. Once I put the lid on this pan, I'm going to move the fire around so there's more, more coals right near the pan. We just started a timer and we're going to rotate the pan every seven minutes. This is probably like the 12th car that's now driven past us to go to that party. Not counting coming back. It's been on for about 35 minutes and we're going to check it. We can kind of smell it burning so we're a little nervous. It might be too, too done. That looks almost perfect. I think it might be done. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty done. Hopefully it's not too burned or tastes too smoky. We tried to go to Walmart earlier and buy a Dutch oven, but they were all out of them. It definitely seems like it's undercooked. Ooh, it looks like it's undercooked a lot. It really is. Oh no. We might have to go back on the fire. That side only, that side cooked. <laughs> you don't like it? It's not that good? Oh, it's really bad. It's too smoky, the whole thing. And then it's just not, it's not good in general. It's not, it doesn't even taste like a snickerdoodle. Gotcha. Let's see what you think. Yeah. Ooh, look, nice and baked all the way. What do you think? This is not that great of a dessert that we've made. We really need to get the yeah. Dutch oven with the lid. This is not that good. The apple crisp that we made in the fall are way better. Tonight we're going to be heating Kate's cross track with this Vivor 8 kilowatt 12 volt diesel heater along with a Jackery 500. So I just have a little cable running from the heater into the 12 volt port on the Jackery and that's how we're going to power the heater. Got the heater plugged in and now it's time to turn it on. We got the heater up and running and we have the tube going in through the window. We also have a carbon monoxide detector in my car just to be safe. Oh, it feels pretty warm in here. One last look at your setup. Elizabeth's already in there. Kate's going to be staying over here. Elizabeth's on that side. And then this is what the mattress looks like again. All right, it should be a good night. We're closing you in. Bye. Bye. Now that we both have our sleeping arrangements set up, we're going to head off to bed. 
We'll check in tomorrow in the morning. Good night. Good morning. Good morning. How did you guys sleep? Pretty good. It's like 10 o'clock. Yeah, it is pretty late. It's, really, it's still really warm in here. The heater pipe is right behind me. I just came in to visit. I slept in the Forerunner last night. Would you stay in here again? Yeah, I thought it was pretty comfortable. It was pretty warm. Do you think it's more comfortable in here or on your sleeping pad in your car? I think this, my car is more comfortable because I have more room and the sleeping pad is like equally nice of a mattress, but it is warmer in here, so that's nice. Did you think it was comfortable? I thought it was pretty comfortable and the heating was more warm than, like it was better than yesterday, definitely. It's probably on for 14 hours. And when we started it, it was not full and it's now down to here. We think we're gonna go out to get bagels, but first we're having some homemade apple salsa with some chips, along with some spicy guacamole. The mattress worked out pretty well for the two nights of camping. It was pretty comfortable, and I think it would be even better for summer camping, but paired with the diesel heater, it was great. It was only around $60. Thanks for watching, as always.